Hi, I'm Cheryl. I'm here at Life's Memories and More in Three Rivers, Massachusetts. And I'm here with Ellie, who's behind the camera, who's part of our creative team here at Life's Memories and More, and Tanya, also known as T. She's the peanut gallery that you may hear her voice in the background as we do this demo. Hey! <laughs> All right, well today, we'd like to take you through a project that we're working on, and it's actually going to be the flowers on top of this barrel. Okay, the barrel is sold separately, so we're going to focus on just the flowers today and maybe talk about the barrel if we have time at the end because we have a couple of different ways, things to show you. So we're going to show you this easily to make, beautiful do-it-yourself spring home decor that's also a great Mother's Day gift that you can do with your kids or for your own mother. In addition, I'll be showing and demonstrating other ways you can decorate your flowers with scrapbooking supplies that you may already have at home. So let's go over the supplies that you're going to need. If you didn't order our store kit, you will need two to three coordinating sheets of paper. You'll need acrylic paint or stain, coordinating ink pad for chalking, double-sided adhesive, the blending tool that goes with the ink pad. You will need uh, the adhesive, is, you can use either wet or dry. So you, I use Mod Podge, but you can use score tape. You'll need the Zots to attach the ribbon. You may want the acrylic paint. We use white because then you can color it any color you would like. Um, so I suggest the white. And then you would need the flocking. We use the pink and the yellow. And then we have some bows, again, pink and yellow. You'll need a pencil for tracing, scissors for cutting out, and the, blush, the brush to actually paint on the Mod Podge. If you did order our store kit, you'll need just wet or dry adhesive, small glue dots, scissors, and your ink pad for chalking. Whenever you purchase one of these home decor wood pieces, there's a planning stage. If you ordered the unfinished wood flower pieces with our Life's Memories and More kit, congratulations. This part of the project already been done for you. You don't need to spend hours picking out paper and figuring out how to embellish. This is going to be as easy as paint by numbers. If you ordered the unfinished wood flower pieces without our store kit, you will need to do some planning. First, select a color scheme. Primary, pastel, seasonal, vintage, anything works with flowers. But think of things that you would like. For example, uh, those flowers are interchangeable with other wood toppings. Like we have the snowflakes, and they look great even just on a bookshelf. The snowflakes typically are white, but we did ours in the cool colors as well. You can use blues, you can use purples. They have the Valentine's Day uh, for the month of February, and that can be pinks, it can be blues, um, obviously reds, Again, it's your choice, it can go vintage. Then we have like the Easter time for the, for the next month. Um, so we have um, carrots, which are orange. Then we also, so just basically what I'm saying is pick a color scheme that suits you and actually suits the season. So after choosing a color scheme, choose two to three pattern papers. If you're lucky, it's a double-sided paper with a coordinating backside and one that is easy to visibly see your tracing lines. Select a coordinating acrylic paint or stain color, or use white, which gives you the option to color with any color. Now, it's time to prep your wood flowers. Hi, the prep stage now. If you don't have our kit, our store kit, your work is not yet done. You will need to trace all of the shapes on your pattern paper, and you may want to mark the front and top of some of the flowers as they're not really symmetrical on both wood pieces and the paper so it will be easy to line up later on. If you do have our kit, you'll want to mark the front and top after cutting out the shapes. So again, the paper is upside down, what I'm gonna use, and I've already marked this as top and front so I wanna face it down. And I'm going to trace right around it And then I'm going to mark T for top, so I remember that that petal belongs to this petal once I cut it out. Hey, T is for Tanya. Oh, T is for Tanya. Sorry. <laughs> T is for top also. <laughs> all right. So now the next step is you cut out, after you trace everything, you cut out all your shapes. And I just so happened to have a shape right here already cut out. And I was good because on the back, I wrote T for Tanya's top. 
And what I'm going to do is, sim is very simple. I'm going to take some Mod Podge. This could be, again, score tape. It could be any wet adhesive. And I'm just going to brush this right on the top. And the nice thing about Mod Podge is that it's not only an adhesive, but it actually is a very good sealer for things as well, too. So there's my T. And I'm going to put it right at the top. And you'll see that it lines up. And then just press it down. And don't worry about the adhesive overlapping because it's going to dry clear. Okay, so you just press it down and put it aside. The next thing I'm going to show you is actually how to use the flocking powder that is included in the store kit. Here we have already the pattern paper on top. Okay, I took the double-sided adhesive, which is also included in the kit. There's a half a circle. I attached it to this wood chip half circle. I'm going to peel off the top. I say that easily, but it's not always that easy. Peel off the top. I'm going to take my flocking powder, whoops, dump it on there, although it won't be as mu that much. You don't need that much at all, because you're going to find that once you pat it down, you're going to shake it off, any excess, and you're just going to rub it right in. And it gives you a nice little velvety type look with the flock. Okay. Now, another optional thing that you could do is you could ink or chalk the edges. So you will see here on tees that she had done, she chalked them with a pink, coordinating pink color. Matches very well. I chose to do the purple. You take your blending tool and you simply go all the way around. And you can even go a little bit on the top, give it a little bit of chalking right on top of the paper. Okay, so there's another type of, type of effect that you can do. How do you and get into optional. those corners? Well, to get into the corners, it's easy, actually. You can actually do, this This goes pretty, pretty close. You could take, really, a high-tech tool like a Q-tip <laughs> and actually stick it in there and kind of like squish it right in the middle. You could take a foam brush and push it in. Anything that you think that would actually fit in there is fine. Um, I've used Q-tips. I've used a foam brush. Um, you can use just about anything that you want. You can even use your finger if you want. The only thing I would suggest, if you use your finger, the ink pad, it's not, the ink's not going to come off your finger probably for about a day. However, if you do have a scrubby tool, you will find that you will be able to get the ink right off. And Tanya carries those scrubby tools? Yes, she does. Awesome. I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> All right, so another thing that you might want to find is um, bringing, going back to this one right here. Sometimes when you cut your paper, if you don't cut it just within the pencil lines, because remember, the pencil lines are on the outside, as you trace, if you don't cut within it, sometimes what happens is that they overlap on the opposite side. This one actually didn't, but if it did, um, you may want to trim off some of that excess with scissors first. But then we also have this tool that you can use. It's a washable paper file, and it can be actually used at an angle just to file down your paper so that it, it kind of blends in more with the wood. Okay, so now, as far as the embellishing is concerned, we did the flocking. I showed you that already. The only other thing you have to do is take a small zot or dot and add a bow. Okay, so you'll see actually the finished one right here, the same one. When it's done. Okay, so at this time, I would say your project was finished. But the question is it. You have the entire back side that you could decorate too. And I'm going to show you some ideas that your kids, depending upon their age, may be able to do also. So here are some other things that you can do, if you would like, on those wooden flower pieces. You can either put them on the back so that you have both a front design and a back design, or just leave them on the back, okay, and do this. This is something you can do with, with your kids, depending upon their ages. And you can include photographs. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to show you is this one right here and it kind of reminded me of hearts even though they're flower petals so I thought ooh, wouldn't it be great to do little hearts all over here so what I did was I took some of this enamel accent and I just kind of did a little V to make hearts and little dots that go in between and I also used to draw the vine I just kind of did it freehand I used a sharpie paint marker and these you have to make sure you shake before you use them and I drew additional leaves I use a heart punch to cut out the photo. And then I did a little heart as well, which I kind of just cut out freehand. But that's with foil. 
And foil is another one of those techniques that's it's kind of fun to use and put on your projects, whether it's a scrapbooking page, a wood home decor, um, or a card. And just to show you how easy it is, I took some of that double-sided tape, and I'm going to take it off. I kind of marked it so it'll be easy to take off, and you won't see me hesitating. You take a piece of foil, shiny side up, you place it on that double-sided adhesive, you rub it down. And I will tell you that I save all these pieces even afterwards because, and I will show you why, you're going to peel it off, and you might have a little spots here and there, but that's okay. You take this extra piece, and you just go back over it, and you rub it down, okay? And then, you're, and then it's covered. So now you have a nice, beautiful piece of foil that can be decorated, okay? And you've got the little heart shape right on there. Okay, so that's one way you can actually incorporate photos of your kids or grandkids into your flowers. Now I'm going to show you actually a, another way you can decorate. This one is also using the enamel dots, enamel accents, and I used flowers. Now the flowers, you can pick a flower that already has a color, and what I did was I took my ink pad and I just and my blending tool and I basically just brushed right around that flower, just around the edges of the petal. If you wanted to, to make sure that your cards or your wood decor, your flowers match perfectly with all the inks that you're doing on all your projects, take a plain white flower and use your blending tool and cover it with, with ink. How did you get the purple petals? Okay, but these, these were already pre-done, those, those purple, but here's a white one. No, and I mean... Oh, These yes, 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 yes. Petals. Okay, so out of the flowers. So the, the petals inside the petals, so to speak. This is a great idea. Use your kid's fingerprints or thumbprints. Now, when you do that, if you're going to use an ink pad, I must warn you, be careful with the kid, make sure they don't put their hands in their mouth. It takes about a full day to get that ink off your hands, unless you use a scrubby tool which is like this right here that Tanya sells at the store, which will take the um, ink off your ink, off your hands. The other thing is... Will is, it work on your arm too? Oh, <laughs> yes, yes, I get into my work. Um, the other thing it can do is you can use acrylic paint if you want, and that way it washes right off after you put the kid's thumbprints or fingerprints in there. So that kind of incorporates the kids into your project as well, especially since, you know, May is the month for Mother's Day, so that's kind of perfect. So... Another sample that we did was I actually took a stencil and I put the stencil on top and what I did was I taped it from this side so that it stays on there. You don't have to worry about it you know, moving around as you're doing this. And then I took a darker green Distress Ink and my blending tool and I blended the whole thing. Then I took an embossing pad and you can use any pad, it could be perfect medium it can be Versamark, it can be any type of embossing pad that you have. I took the embossing pad and basically I just literally put it right on top of the stencil and just kind of squished it right in there to make sure it got in between all the grooves. Then I took the stencil off, I poured clear embossing powder all over the top, shook it off, don't touch it, but just tap it off, then I used my heating tool, and that's how I got this far. Now that I'm at this point, I can now go back and I can take my other blending tools, and I can actually go in and I can take this pink and start blending in with a little bit of pink wherever I would like. And then I can take a little bit of purple and blend that in wherever I would like and it just kind of kind of goes right through and blends everything together okay so you kind of get like a, a nice um, blending look between the pink and the purple and then what you can do is um, you can take some prills or these are just like they're like foam squishy little dots they're um, a decorative dot and then you could put those in the middle all right now, because I already have a wood one on the back side with the flock, 
and I could have put the flock on the other side as well. What I did was I decided just to put it on a back piece of paper and then I can have this. So now I can have two sides. Okay. All right, so let me put this one up here for now. And one other way that we did was we did the um, stamping. We took some stamps. Uh, just any type of flower stamp that you have, butterfly stamp. All right, so we have a lot of things that you can do to incorporate the kids, to get them involved. The, the thumbprints or the fingerprints, we've got their photos on there. They can color with crayons or color, color pencils or the, your markers. We also have other ways that we can do the inner circles of the flowers, okay? We have buttons. Now, everybody has buttons at home. If you don't have the right color button, don't panic. This is the color of what that button was. All I did was I took the Catherine Pooler stamp pad, okay, which again is great for embossing because it stays a little bit wet a little bit longer, enough to put the embossing powder on. So what I did was I stamped the button with that with the party dress. Then I took some embossing powder, the clear, so the color would come through, poured it over it, shook it off, and then heat, use the heat tool to heat it. Okay, it comes up with a little bit of texture, a little bit of bubbly in there, but I think it adds a little bit to the button. But that would be a cute center of a flower as well. The other thing which I did was somebody mentioned to put prills in there. Now, I didn't have any prills. Prills are those little small, round, hard things. I didn't have any of those, but I had some of these toppings that you can actually put inside shaker cards. And I put down like a yellow ink pad, and then I put some stickles on top of that painted that on, and when that dried, I used some clear wet adhesive, and I just put this, the prills, well, toppings, right on top in the center. So that's another inside of a flower. Another one is using glitter, but this time you can actually color this glitter with your Copic markers. So what I like about this, and I'm gonna actually show you this one, is you take your double-sided adhesive, okay, and then what you're going to do is you're going to take this cool glitter. And it's got to be cool or warm glitter because that's what works with the Copic markers. Okay, you pour it on top just like you do glitter. Shake off the excess. If you have a cosmetic brush or something, okay, you're going to brush it off too. And normally I would move that little piece of paper that I had there, but that's kind of like what I'm holding on to right now. And then all you're going to do is you're going to pick up your Copic markers and you're going to color and this is something the kids can do too, if you don't mind them using your Copic markers. All right, and you're just gonna color around. All right, so that's what this one was right here. And again, another idea <laughs> is we have these things called puffy velvet pens. They come in pink, they come in yellow, and what it does is it, it creates another three-dimensional effect. I don't know if you can actually take a good look at that. You have to shake this up, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the pen and basically, you're just kind of putting it down all over the place. So it's going to be like that. And then you're going to take your heating tool, and I'm just going to hold down with my scissors for the moment, and watch the magic on this. Okay, what you're going to see is as this dries, it's going to begin to puff. Okay. So you get this puffing effect. It kind of, kind of reminds me of popcorn. So if you have a movie night scrapbook layout page, it would be great to have the yellow as the popcorn coming out of the, of the kernels or a card with popcorn on it or something like that. All right, and last but not least, I'm going to talk about the wooden barrels. The wooden barrel itself, remember, is sold separately, and there's a number of different ways you can decorate this. All right. Um, the one barrel on the right that used with the it's used with sprays, okay. You just spray the whole wooden wooden barrel itself, and then you can use um, you can cut out some burlap and put the burlap on top of the strip and adhere it on there. So that was the one on the right. The one on the left was actually done with a distress ink pad because that's what everybody has at home. I used a distress ink pad and my blending tool. And I, first of all, I just took the ink pad itself and just swiped it right across the barrel. And then I used the blending um, tool to actually blend it in. And then I actually even used a water brush, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, and I kind of went in and I blended a little bit towards the top, give a little more shading on the top and the bottom. 
um, because I kind of took my ink pad and put it on my craft mat and then took my water brush and went in and just colored it to give it a little more shading. The metal part, the metallic part right here, was actually done with this 3D stamp paint. Okay. And it is a very shiny metallic cover. And it gives it a little bit of texture as well. Right. So I, I like this one because it kind of made it more realistic for a barrel look. Um, but that's basically what we did. So again, wrapping it up, we have the flowers done with just the paper. Beautiful just as is. Can be looked great on top of the barrel. Can be looked just on top of a bookshelf. And then we showed you how you can actually do things to kind of incorporate your kids. So you have the... Um, the, the, the thumbprints, their photos, and I think what I'm going to do is I still have one flower that's not done anything on the back side yet. And of course, I don't know what I just did with it. Okay. Oh, thank you. Um, and I'm hoping to actually put a picture of my son, who's now 28. <laughs> um, but this was when he was two years old, so I'm hoping to put something like there on here. And I've got to figure out what to do on the outside. If you have any ideas or you've done this project and you've done something different, let us know. Send us a photo here at Life's Memories and More. We'd love to see it. I'm always open to other people's ideas and inspirations. Okay, so um, please make sure you stay safe during this time. And we hope to see you at some point. If you can get out here ever in Massachusetts, we'd love to see you stop by. But stay safe and happy crafting from our family to yours. Oh, okay. Um, and then at the very end, I really want to talk about the two different barrels. The two different, yeah. yeah. Um, how they're sold separately. They can be decorated mm -hmm. with either that for this one right. or using this for that. Mm -hmm. um, Sorry. I got it. I got to set up for that. I should have told you I okay. was going to pause Sorry. for that. Um, okay. Because that I got to do. Yeah. Okay. Did I talk about everything? I think so. All right, let me just adhere this thing. Hi, I'm the peanut gallery that was in the background. I'm Tanya. I own Life's Memories and More in Three Rivers, Mass. And I'll say this, hopefully without crying, take 1017. Hi, I'm Tanya. I'm the owner of Life's Memories and More in Three Rivers, Massachusetts. I was the peanut gallery in the background today during this video. We did pre-record it so you can see that I dressed up for the occasion. I have my pink clothes on. I just wanted to give a shout out to Cheryl and Ellie for a great job. They did it really in one take. Um, Cheryl put a lot of effort into giving you tons and tons of ideas that you could use for yourself with the kids. So I hope you enjoyed it. We would love to see what you come up with on your own. So please post pictures. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. I just want to say thank you for supporting small business and the other stores that are in the local scrapbook store virtual marketplace and in the paper craft paper crafters purge flash sale so have a great weekend thank you all and uh ignore my moments of uh weakness I, it's been a tough road i hope everybody stays safe i hope everybody stays healthy and let's get crafting